hello beautiful fashion designers you're welcome to this channel this is bora of bora closet and if you are new you're welcome please click on the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get to know when i post new videos thank you for coming around and if you're a returning subscriber thank you also for coming around once again thank you for your likes thank you for your comment thank you for your subscriptions and everything you do to support this channel i appreciate you and i pray that god will bless you and in this tutorial i'll be showing you how i made this top on your screen it has two different sleeves so whichever one you want is demonstrated in this video and i also demonstrated how to join this in two ways if this is what you're interested in knowing please keep on watching let's go I'll be using this Ankara fabric for this dress. It's about two and a half yards. So I'll go ahead to fold it into two to cut the front part. I'm starting with the front part. To know how much to fold, I'm going to be calculating everything that I'll be needing for the front measurement, which is starting with my bust, then all the allowances I'll be using. And altogether, I folded 15 inches for the front part. And that is just going to be enough for everything that I am going to be needing for my front piece. Then I'll go ahead to measure the length I want for the top. And I marked out 34 inches here with the allowance I will use to fold it in. So you can measure where you want the top to reach on your body this one is just going to be beyond my hip and i'll mark it out like that next i'll put my back measurements which is 16 inches divided by two and that is going to give me eight inches and i'll mark it right there after that i will input the neck measurements which is three inches by three inches that i'm using right here for the round neck of the dress then i'll shape that part out with my french curve then to make the shoulder slope i'm going to go down there by one inch and connect it to the neckline to make the shoulder slope the next thing is to mark the chest line which is your bust divided by six plus two inches and that is what i have there i'm marking eight inches this is my bust divided by six plus two inches that i'm marking here and that's going to serve as my chest line then I'm going to connect that line to the chest line and that is going to be where my armhole will be formed. And I'll be taking the other vertical measurement and here I have the underbust length which is 13 inches and then I have the waist length here which is 16 inches. And that's the hip length there, 24 inches. So I'm going to draw a straight line over each of these markings. Next thing I'll be doing is to mark out the nipple to nipple measurement, which is 8 inches divided by 2, and that is 4 inches. I'm marking all the way down from the chest line up to the hip line. Then I'll draw a straight line over those markings. And here is the bust point measurement, which is 11 inches from your shoulder to nipple. That is where your bust point is, and this is what I've marked out here. So on this fabric, I have the vertical measurement of the chest line, the bust point, the under bust length, the waist length, and the hip length. Those are the vertical measurements that I have there. So on the under bust length, I'm going to be taking away 1.5 inches from that side. From the waistline, I'm also going to be taking away the same 1.5 inches. And I'll connect the two together and curve it to that bust point line so from that bust point line i'm going to be connecting it to half of the shoulder line here so that is what i'm doing right away what i'm trying to do is to achieve a princess star bustier i actually don't like cutting princess star without making it a bustier i like it better with the bustier cut so that is what i have done here you can see that i have connected the bust point to half of the measurement that i have on the shoulder to chest line then on the other side of this nipple to nipple measurement i'm going to be taking away half an inch and curve it up to meet the bust point also now on the armhole side i'm going to be extending this line by one inch because when i'm joining it may not be in enough like to connect to the other part so i'm going to be extending the armhole i have done this in my other tutorials on princess abuste and you can watch it if you don't get what i did here but it's just as simple as that just make a new armhole for the sides so that when you're joining the two to the center piece you will have enough to go around both sides and after that i'll be taking away half an inch from both sides of that new ammo line that i just made and that is going to be what i'll cut out 
so that to give it that fitting at the ammo part the next thing i'll be doing is to extend the dart lines all the way down on both sides just like that so i'm going to extend it to the end of the measurement don't forget that i measured 34 inches for the length of this top and i'm going to extend these two lines all the way down to the end of the length of the top after that i'm going to go ahead to input my horizontal measurement starting with my bust measurement so that is going to be my bust divided by four and i will add the allowance that i need to it enough allowance and the same thing i will do on the under bust and the waistline and on the hip line and even down there so i'm going to just divide the round measurement or the horizontal measurement whichever one you decide to call it by four and add the allowances to it don't forget that you're cutting out from this part so you're going to add that together that is two inches that i have removed from here and i'm going to just remember to add these two inches that i'm going to be cutting out to the measurement that i am putting here and also add allowance for the joining so don't forget to return all this part that you'll be cutting out later to the side measurement when you're drawing it out and uh today i've just decided to use my free hand to do most of these things and you can see how i am forming the shape already so this is the hip line divide your hip into four add that part that you'll be cutting out add your allowance and then you shape it like that you can use your french curve but i prefer to use my free hand here actually you can cut this top just like normal princess uh cut top but just like i said earlier i like making my princess cut bustier so that they will give my bust enough space to breathe and then i realized that it fits more perfectly when you cut a bustier for a princess that so this is what i have here and i'll go ahead and cut it out follow me as i cut to know the part that you're going to cut out so after i was done cutting these are all the three pieces that i have for the front there's two side pieces and the center piece and i'm going to put this aside to work on the back piece so for the back piece i folded my fabric into two i folded 14 inches which included the zip allowance the next thing is to measure the length of the top after which you're going to draw out the zip allowance you can just fold it in also you can fold that zip allowance part in but it's just better you mark it out like this so i'm marking 1.5 inches from the starting line up to the end of the length and that is going to be my zip allowance next i'll be marking the neck measurement which is three inches by one inch and i'll make a curve with the two lines after that i'll be taking the back measurement which is eight inches that is 16 inches divided by two from there i'll take away one inch which will mark the shoulder slope then i'll connect that one inch down to the neck measurement and that is going to form the shoulder slope just like you can see there the next thing is to measure the chest line that is your bust divided by six plus two inches and that is eight inches for me so that is what i'm marking right there and after that i'm going to connect the chest line to the shoulder line just like that and make a curve to make the armhole the next thing i'll be doing is to take the bust point which is my shoulder to my bust point and that is 11 inches that i'm marking right there this is to know where my dart will be stopping because the dart for the back is stopping one inch below the bust point then i'll be marking the half length measurement which is 16 inches right there and the hip line which is 24 inches so from your waist to your hip line you measure what that is you can you remember that it is the same thing that i did for the front next i'll be taking the nipple to nipple measurement which is eight inches divided by two that is four inches so that is where i'm going to be forming the dart for the back pieces so on the waistline i'm going to be taking away 0 0.5 inches on both sides you can use 0 0.75 inches which is half and a quarter inch and i'm going to connect from the waistline to two inches above the hip line that is where the dart will stop just right there and from the waistline i'm also going to connect to the bust point that is one inch below the bust point is the reason why i measured that the bust point in the first place so i'm going to just connect from the waistline up to one inch below the bust point also so that is where the dart will, will start and it will end at that two inches above the hip line so this is 
the basic that and that is what i'm using for the back the next thing is to input the rand measurement so your bust divided by four your waist divided by four but don't forget to add that part that we are going to be holding for the day if you don't do that your measurement is going to get shortened so you know that 0 0.5 inch plus 0 0.5 inch that is one inch so you are going to add that to that waist measurement before you add your sewing allowance to it and that is what i just did there then you can form your curve you can use the ruler or the french curve to do this but i'm using my free hand just like i said earlier for this tutorial so you also do the same for the hip line and you curve it to meet the waistline just like this and down the back piece is ready and we can cut now follow me as i cut so when i was done cutting these are the pieces that i have for the back and i'll put these aside the next thing i did was to cut lining pieces for all the front and the back pieces and i also cut s tape for the lining pieces i'm not using s tape for the fabric i'm only using s tape for the lining pieces but if you want to use for both fabric and lining you can go ahead to cut your s tape but i only used s tape for the lining now i can start joining at the beginning of this video i mentioned that i tried two joining patterns for this top so i'll be demonstrating the first one and the first one requires that i join the lining pieces separately and the fabric separately which is what i'm about to do here so to know where to stop the joining on those lines i'm going to just mark where i want it to reach like where i want the opening to start from so from my shoulder line to 18 inches that is below my waistline i'm taking i'm marking that place so that will sew from the armhole to that part on both sides and i'll do the same for the fabric too so i'm joining the same thing on the fabric and the same thing on the lining pieces when i was done joining both linings and fabrics these are what i have on your screen so i have the lining piece on top of the fabric now and after you are done joining the necklines of both lining and fabric you are going to sew this part the down part because you're turning it in by like half an inch or one inch so you are going to sew the down part after sewing the down part you sew it by the two sides then when you are done with that you lay this space very well make them lay on top of each other like this then you can pin it down if it's going to confuse you so you sew down like that and down on the other side also the other part too you are going to repeat the same thing on the other side you sew on one side sew on the other side that way it you are going to be turning everything out from one of the arm holes you know we, we're joining everything now and the only space we have after that is the one on the arm hole to turn it out so when i was done joining them together this is what i have on your screen this way you'll be able to turn it out from one of the arm holes so whichever arm hole you're using and these are the two back pieces you can see the dart there that's what the dart is going to be looking like so i'm going to go ahead to turn this out now look at how i'm doing that so you bring it out from one of the arm holes and you make sure that all of the pointy edges come out you can use a scissors to push the pointed edges out this is going to make it lay very well so that is what i'm doing right there and you can go ahead to iron it out to make everything lay very well before i move to the second joining method i'm going to demonstrate what to do from this point to you if you are using this joining method so the next thing you're just going to do is to work on the back pieces hold the dart on the back pieces join the shoulders together the shoulders of the front and the back pieces together and then mark the measurement like join the two sides together and attach your zip to the zip allowance so that is all you're going to be doing from this point if you are using this joining method actually it was the second joining method i later used for the dress so once i was done with this joining method i lost everything on the front pieces not the back pieces there is no issue with the back pieces so i just lost everything on the front pieces to demonstrate the second joining method so if you are not using this method you can use the other one which i prefer to this one that is because that opening at the front is better with the second joining method so that is how you're going to complete it up to the part where we'll be fixing the sleeves so these are the pieces for the second joining method i already loosed everything on the front pieces just like i said and you can see them so this one we're not joining lining separately or fabric separately we're joining everything together so you just hold the two front pieces together 
this one requires that you overlock because the edges are going to be showing outside the other one does not require that because we turned it out so we are going to be sewing up to where we want the opening to start you know i did the same thing for the first journey method so i'm marking the same 18 inches that i joined for the first journey method on this second journey method so i'm going to just sew the that up to that part from the armhole to the 18 inches up you're getting what i am doing so you sew it up to that level when i was done joining the dart line this is what i have right here on your screen i have gone ahead to overlock the edges from the top to bottom so i did it together here then when i got to this point i did it separately i didn't overlock the two together so you can just stop at wherever you want your opening to start from. I'll be folding this part like this. You can use your hemming gum to hem this part but what I did was that I sewed it down. So I folded just half an inch like that and I sewed it down because if I don't do that the overlocked part is going to be showing outside so you just sew it down like that. You do that for both sides. So this is right here when I was done hemming those openings. You can see how they look on the wrong side so we have reached the parts that i demonstrated the other time you remember the first joining method so from here we're just going to be continuing by joining the two shoulders together the shoulders for the front piece to the back piece and join it like that after joining the two shoulders you join the sides also with the allowance that you added to it the other time so this is what i have here when i was done you can see that the top is almost ready the only thing that is left now is to attach the sleeves because i already attached the zip also so this is what it's going to look like when you reach this point you can see how well laid it looks so next we're going to be working on the sleeves and don't forget i tried two sleeves for this top to see which one is better or which one is finer so i'm going to go ahead to draft the first sleeve which is a straight sleeve and i have this fabric folded this 20 inches long so i folded it into two i'm just going to use all of this length which is like three quarter sleeve i'm going to be marking the ammo curve on this sleeve by coming down by four inches at that part then i have to shape it you can use your french curve but i'm using my free hand just like i have been saying it in this tutorial so i'll divide that part into two just follow what i'm doing so from there i'll curve it up to the other end just like that so i have the curve for the arm all drawn out already then i'm going to mark my upper arm length then my mid arm length the next thing is to input the round measurement of the sleeve so for my upper arm it's 12 inches and i've gone ahead to do 1.5 inches allowance so that is 12 inches then here also i'm marking the same then here i'm reducing the measurement by one inch just measure all of those parts and transfer them onto the sleeve by dividing the measurements you have into two and connect the lines like this with either your free hand or your ruler so this is the sleeve right here i'm trying to confirm that what i have is going to go around my arm hole which is just right and i'm going to just cut it out like this so this is the first straight sleeve and i'm going to just place this on the other fabric to cut the second sleeve so these are the two straight sleeves already i'll go ahead to notch the center so i'm going to be attaching each of these sleeves to the two arm holes join these two sleeves together hem the end of it with your hemi gum i used hemi gum to hem the end of the sleeve and this is just what it looks like so this is the straight sleeve top sample if you go back to the beginning of the video you see what it looks like when i tried it on now i've gone ahead to lose the straight sleeves from the top and i want to try the puff sleeve now the fabric i had at this point was not really much any longer but i tried to just use everything that was left of the fabric because i just wanted to see how both sleeves look like i wasn't sure which sleeve to actually use for the top since i saw pictures of both sleeves so i wanted to see which one would look better on me so this is why i'm doing this second sleeve actually and i want to believe that you are also going to learn something from here so i'm just going to use all of this length make the curve 
just like i did on the straight sleeves so you're just going to go down from the starting point of the sleeve by four inches then from that four inches part you can also come in here like you divide this lace into three the length you have here into three just to form your curve then you draw it like this just mark like that up to the edge of the sleeve at the other end then you can cut it out so i'm going to replicate this on the on the second sleeve too. so i can cut this out now so these are the two sleeves right here on your screen and i'm just going to fold that part in like that sew it on it and then pass your elastic through it you just measure elastic that is going to be enough to go around your arm and you're going to pass the elastic through the hole you already made at the end of the sleeve just like this so just attach the elastic to your safety pin and drive it out just like this so this is it that's come out from this end and you can secure it so that it doesn't lose with your machine or you hold it with the office pin or the, the same safety pin you used to pass it out so this is what it looks like now so this same thing that i have done for this i also did it for the second puff sleeve the next thing is to join the sides of the sleeves together so each sleeves you join the side just straight line down there so like this you place a sleeve on one of the arm holes pleat a node with your office pin make sure that you finish this before you take it to the machine and you can also join without pinning it first depending on what you like or which one is better for you but i believe that it is better to pin what you want to sew first before you go to the machine to do the work so you won't be stressing yourself so much it makes your work easier you just pin it there pin it all the way around in equal proportion and this is what it looks like after i was done these are the puff sleeves on the top sitting right there so you could go back to the beginning of the video and tell me which one is better the puff sleeve or the straight sleeve which one would you prefer to replicate and we have come to the end of this tutorial thank you for coming around thank you for joining me if you have any question or any comments please go ahead to the comment section and drop whatever you have there and don't forget to subscribe like so that we get more reach and i'll see you in the next video till then stay good and stay safe bye